With this, I would like to invite our uh, keynote speaker, Mr. Dina Nath Kol Kolhar. He would be addressing the issue of uh, industry academia collaborate to innovate. A brief introduction of Mr. Kol Kolkar. As a data and analytics specialist who has worked closely with client business and IT stakeholders, he believes that many organizations are yet to realize the power of their data in real time decision making. In a career spanning three decades in TCS, Dinanath has held various leadership roles. Dinanath holds a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from VJTI, Mumbai University. I invite Mr. Dinanath. Good morning. Uh, respected dignitaries on the dais, uh, off the dais, and uh, my friends. I will start off with uh, telling a few stories. I think uh, each one of us have always grown up uh, hearing stories, so I thought it would be good to start off with telling stories. And I will tell stories about uh, three people. Uh, the first person, I think uh, many of you probably have heard the name, uh, probably have uh, interacted with him, uh, is Mr. Kohli. Mr. Kohli is regarded as the father of the Indian IT industry, was the first uh, head of TCS. Uh, interestingly, about uh, a decade and a half back, uh, about 15 years back, the government of Maharashtra called Mr. Kohli and said, uh, we need to look at uh, the engineering education in the uh, state of Maharashtra and we need to study it and come up with recommendations. In his mid-80s, uh, Mr. Kohli put together a team of academicians and uh, industry experts and created a report. Not only that, uh, he went on to implement that report and to implement that report he was given three institutes to pick up from and he chose College of Engineering Pune because it was the second oldest institute in, the, in India. And uh, many of you who have been associated with College of Engineering Pune and have seen the transformation it has gone through. It's been a phenomenal transformation for an institute which we are all proud of. And I'm sure many of you who have not seen it should definitely go and see the transformation which has happened. And Mr. Kohli continues to make a difference, giving uh, various uh, guidance to the uh, academic fraternity uh, all through uh, the years that he has been closely associated with this program. The second story I want to tell is about the TCS current CEO, which is uh, Rajesh Gopinathan. And Rajesh took over the reins uh, from N. Chandra when Chandra went in to move to uh, head the Tata Group as the chairman. Rajesh took on this responsibility about uh, uh, almost a two years back. And uh, one of the first things which he did was he announced the TCS Business 4.0 Thought Leadership Framework. And he said, this is how we will drive change and transformation and growth for our customers. And when he announced this business 4.0, the first thing which he said is, how will we make our people ready for business 4.0? And one of the challenges he gave to us in the leadership team is go and look at how you can help the academia revamp their curriculum to make a completely aligned to the business 4.0 or the industry 4.0 agenda. Many of us in the leadership team work tirelessly connected with various academic institutions, uh, and over a period of about three months, we actually came up with a recommended curriculum. We are, in this academic year, we have rolled it out to three pilot colleges, and the journey didn't stop over there. We had to actually take it up with the AICT chairman and ensure that it gets approved and then made available for all other institutions to implement. And that just happened about a month back where we got the final approval from Professor Sarsarabuddha, who is the AICT chairman. So that's the second big uh, change or the leading uh, change as such from the uh, TCS leadership. The third story is my own story and it is linked to the first two stories. I remember meeting Mr. Kohli about uh, two years back or maybe two and a half years back and uh, he was just about going to celebrate his 93rd birthday and I remember uh, having a phenomenal discussion with him on the topic of education. I had taken my uh, HOD from uh, VJTI, from where I am from, and uh, I actually uh, told him, sir, we want to do something very different, and he said, don't do anything different, just implement what I have done in COEP, and he gave a list of 80 colleges, and I said, that is your goal, I want the next generation to take and replicate what we have done. And uh, one thing which is very interesting about Mr. Kohli is that, you know, whenever you go to Mr. Kohli, he always gives you one task every time, so I'm actually worried when he, whenever I go there, he has something very innovative and very different to tell me. 
And he said, you know what, while you talk about education and do something about education at your own institute, don't forget agriculture. And he said, focus on agriculture, see how technology can help agriculture. And then we put together something very innovative. Uh, I am also the chair of the IEEE Pune section. And we have created a special interest group in uh, affordable agriculture in a very, very collaborative way, working with uh, academic institutions, uh, including agriculture college, including some uh, startups, including some NGOs, and driving this change. So the reason for uh, telling the stories is that there is a lot of things which happen in the background. And it's very important to understand what an organization like TCS really does to foster this type of an ecosystem and foster this type of an environment. But before I go into telling what we do, let me tell you a perspective on the people that we hire. And I, you know, being a data and analytics person, I always like to tell you about the data points. So let me give you some data points. So when we looked at hiring this year, uh, any guesses how many people actually appeared for interviews or registered for interviews? 3,20,000 students appeared or registered. Out of those, 2.85 lakhs actually gave the test. The online test, which was that's the pre-filtering, the online test, we had about 2,16,000 people. Interviewed, 60,000. Selected, 30,000. So I just wanted to give you a scale at which we operate, and that's where, for us, it is a business imperative to actually be very closely associated with academia and it is not necessary for us to be told about it. It is a second nature for us to ensure that we very strongly collaborate with academia. So while we, at a leadership level, we were very closely driving a lot of these initiatives, we felt we need to actually formalize this. And what we have created is an academic uh, interface program, which is called as AIP. Very formally set up a very strong structure which drives this AIP program. Started about 20 years back. And many of us have been part of this uh, Academia Interface program. Many of, uh, there are quite a few of you who have been associated with that. Uh, I have a lot of friends from the Academia right here in Pune. Uh, and there are various benefits uh, through this program. So the institute and faculty benefits quite significantly through this program. Because we do a lot of faculty development programs. We organize faculty visits to our, 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 our uh, campuses out here. Uh, there are various uh, electives or various programs that faculty uh, are participating in our initiatives. We organize uh, roundtables, we organize meets. There is an annual meet which is called Sangam, which is meet of all academicians across India, which is chaired by our HR head and our chief technology officer and our CEO. Uh, that happens annually. So that's focused on the institute and focused on uh, the faculty members. The students benefit through this program as well. You know, obviously there are various workshops that we do. Uh, I have personally been involved and I have a few of my colleagues out here. Uh, they conduct uh, workshops for uh, the students on a regular basis. There are internship programs. We have quite a few awards for best students, uh, best projects, uh, the industrial uh, 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 the, uh, visits which happen. And there are also other things uh, that we do uh, as part of the entire process of uh, Academia Interface program. We talked about giving autonomy to many academic uh, institutions. So TCSers have played a very crucial role in being on study, uh, the board of studies for various curriculums. And as the industry has evolved, we have ensured that the variances and the diversity of the uh, skills that we require, we are playing a very active role. Rather than wait for things to happen, we are proactively going and interacting with various uh, institutes to drive things. Personally, I have been very closely involved with two initiatives in the last year and a half. Uh, the first one has been uh, setting up a lab for, uh, uh, or a center of studies and research for IoT at VJTI, which was a very collaborative effort with TCS and some of my classmates from the 1989 electrical engineering batch with one goal. And we actually are very conscious about the goal that we are going to work on. We are enabling the next generation of students who will make a difference to building the digital India of the future. So when we set up the IoT lab, we said this lab will contribute to making a difference to Digital India initiatives. And it is not only just a lab for studies, but it is also for research. So that's the lab that we have set up. We're working very closely with uh, about six institutes in Pune uh, to set up a lab for the affordable agriculture, to looking at frugal technologies which can make a difference uh, to the farmer. And I'm working very closely with the uh, COEP team, and you know we have uh, our friends from Bao Institute over here on looking at what can we do as regards data and analytics as an area within COEP. So that's 
the type of contribution we are making. The other thing which is very important is that uh, one of the biggest disruptions that we have done in the industry, especially in the field of education, given that we have so much amount of understanding through this collaboration, one of the biggest pain points we noticed was the scale and the ability to handle scale in India. And one of our core innovations, which is our platform called ION, made a big difference. So many of you probably are not aware, but it is one of the largest platforms for getting assessments done. And I don't want to share data points over here, but you know, we'll, at some time I'll, uh, you can look up the amount of assessments. We are the largest assessment platform in the world. So just imagine an academician having to spend significant amount of their time and effort in setting up papers, evaluating students, and doing this manually at that scale. Okay? The ION platform today has completely digitized it and taken away a significant amount of overhead and manual task from the academicians so that they can focus on efforts which are more focused on research and other areas. So the ION platform has also expanded to provide various other learning, uh, we call it as lifelong learning uh, solutions, and that's enabling a complete ecosystem of education, assessment, and the entire life cycle of how we are doing skill development. Uh, I would not uh, you know, be fair if I just talk about just this collaboration on uh, building up talent. We are very focused on research and innovation. So I just wanted to give you a feel of the research and innovation which happens in TCS. So the first research and innovation lab in the area of software was set up by TCS way back in 1981, and it happened to be in Pune. Those of you who have been associated with TCS in Pune know that we have a setup called TRDDC, which is continues to be our largest innovation center. We have various innovation labs within that setup. And we have scaled up that innovation across various innovation labs globally. Uh, there are about 250 publications, uh, about 150 crores annual investment in R&D uh, in the financial year, 3,900 patents filed already by TCS. And we, what we have is a co-innovation network. So we have actually created a very strong network of co-innovation, which creates a complete collaborative network between technology partners, uh, startups, uh, researchers in academia, and various other institutions which are looking at funding those, so VCs, VC firms, and others. And that's actually been a very uh, important element of uh, our growth strategy. So all our businesses take very strong pride in one fact that all our new services, new products are always innovation-led. One of the products that is making a big impact in the industry is our uh, cognitive engine called Igneo. And it actually originated out of our research lab at TRDDC. So research and innovation is very core to our business strategy. And for that, we depend a significant amount of talent and collaboration that is happening with academia. With many of the IITs, we have labs which we operate. We have many of our people who actually work in the labs collaboratively along with these uh, units. And uh, within Pune, uh, we have uh, MOUs signed up with some of these uh, institutions to look at how we can actually foster uh, that uh, setup. So all in all, uh, I believe that uh, academia and the industry collaboration, we have taken some steps to ensure that we treat this as an integral part of our ecosystem, an integral part of our business strategy and we look, look forward to more and more participation from various of our partners to make this more successful. And I wish this uh, conclave a very big success, and I will look forward to more interactions with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinanath, for sharing your experience on research and innovation, academic interface programs, and IoT labs at TCS.